Hey scholars, it's good to be back with you. This is another in a series of videos about mathematics. And today I'd like to talk to you about what the heck a determinant is. Now this is a suggestion from viewer AlexKid1 from, I don't know, out in the interweb somewhere. So AlexKid1, whoever you are, thank you for the suggestion. I'm happy to shoot the video. If you've ever been in a linear algebra class, or maybe you're in one now, you've probably heard of a determinant. Now, mathematicians get pretty cranked up about these things, and I don't blame them. They're interesting. Engineers and scientists, however, sometimes struggle to make the leap from the mathematical description to what they actually need them for. And the answer to what they are depends on your point of view. If you think and want to think in the most general mathematical terms, a matrix is nothing more than a transformation between two vectors. You start with one vector, you whip a matrix on it, you get another vector. Well, that's a transformation. Mathematicians should think in the most general terms because the most general terms allow them, allow them to develop uh, more powerful insights into the nature of mathematics. Well, that's what I want my mathematicians doing. If you're an engineer or a scientist, a determinant might be something that's just sort of in your toolbox. It's useful because it allows you to calculate things that you really care about. Neither one of these two points of view is wrong. We're just looking at the same entity from a different angle. And if there's a problem with how uh, students in linear algebra classes uh, perceive or try to learn determinants, it's probably got to do with that. So let's start with the sort of the, the mathematical description. We'll bring it back around to the, to the ideas that allow us to calculate useful things. Sound good? All right. So a, a matrix is a transformation. What's that mean? Well, there's any number of transformation matrices, but one you may see a lot is called a rotation matrix. But here's what this is going to look like. Let's take the simplest vector I can think of. Okay, there's the x and the y direction, and there's a vector, all right? And we'll call that length 1 there, and there's 0, and there's 0, and there's 1. So that theta is 45 degrees, and the length of the vector is the square root of 2 because of the Pythagorean theorem. Well, what does this mean? Nothing. It's just a mathematical entity. It takes on meaning when it describes something you care about. Right? That's the big idea there. So what's a transformation matrix looks like? Well, here's a transformation matrix. This is a transformation. You start with one vector, you get another one. And this particular transformation is what you get when you rotate a vector. So if I start here, if I wanted to rotate that 45 degrees, pi over 4 radians if you prefer, I'm going to rotate this until it's vertical. Well, what's it going to look like when I rotate it? And let's, let's do this. Let's stretch this axis out a little bit and draw a picture. There's y. And if this goes up like that, I'm going to have a new vector, the transformed vector, is going to have a length of square root of 2, because that's the length of this, I just rotated it. It's going to have no x component. So what I should get if I, if I go through the transformation is x should be 0 and y should be square root of 2. Is that what this does? Let's check. All right. So the uh, cosine and the sine of 45 are the same. That's why I picked this one. And they are the square root of 2 over 2. So here's my transformation matrix if I figure this out. Does that look okay? I think so. Let's multiply this out. Well, look at that. That is that. We just rotated a vector. So, if you're an engineer or mathematician, you go, oh, I rotated a vector. If you want to think of it in more general mathematical terms, I applied a rotational transform to one vector to get another one. Both are right. It just depends on how you look at it. So that's the idea of matrix as a transform. So how do you get to determinants? Well, a determinant is something you calculate from a matrix. It, is, it has properties that are mathematically interesting. Right? 
If you want to think about it in abstract mathematical terms, a determinant tells you something about the volume uh, related to the transformation, and a volume can be positive or negative. Hmm. So, when you go ask a mathematician, what is this? What does this look like? How do I think about it in graphical terms? That's the answer, and that's correct. The problem comes when somebody like me says, what do you mean by a volume in transformed vector space? What are you talking about? Well, the answer is that the determinant has no inherent physical meaning. It is a mathematical computation that turns out to have properties we really care about. So let's circle back around now and get ourselves to the point where we can actually do calculations with those properties. There are two properties we care about. The first one is about whether a matrix is singular or not. A matrix is singular if its determinant equals zero. All right, well, hang on a second. This isn't how they would actually write it. Let's say our matrix is A. You could write it out this way. But mathematicians have a more compact notation. Whatever else you think about ma mathematics, it's compact, it's tight, it's concise. Okay? So this is what you'll see in the books. Now, this is not an absolute value. It's not the absolute value of a vector. This just means determinant. If the determinant of a matrix is 0, it's singular. Remember what singular means? Singular means you can't invert it. Just like you can't divide by 0 in the scalar world, in the matrix world, not all matrices can be inverted. Not all matrices have inverses. Trying to multiply by the inverse of a singular matrix is at least analogous to trying to divide by 0. Right? So that's, that's number one. Number two. This thing is called the eigenvalue equation. Why? I don't know. When mathematicians see an equation enough times, they give it a name. Well, it's not always the handiest name in the world, but it works as well as anything else. So we care about the eigenvalue equation because it shows up absolutely everywhere. I work in the field of structural dynamics sometimes, and to me, eigenvalues are the resonant frequencies of structures. Those are the, stru the frequencies at which structures like to vibrate. If you want an example, here's a little Washburn travel guitar I got sitting in the office. So if I pluck a string, a little out of tune, the frequencies at which this string likes to vibrate are eigenvalues. If you're into uh, image processing, eigenvalues show up there. Eigenvalues have all kinds of mathematical properties that make them useful to people analyzing all kinds of different things in the world around us. What does an eigenvalue equation mean physically? Inherently, nothing. But if you construct a mathematical model correctly, you can cast it in terms of an, uh, the eigenvalue equation, and eigenvalues to then do really have ma uh, physical meaning. They really do tell you things about the world around you. But it's that modeling part. It's when you, the equations describe something you care about, then the things you do with the equations also describe something you care about. Here's the problem with the eigenvalue equation. That's a matrix A. That's the identity matrix I. Lambda is a scalar and X is a vector. There is a theorem called Kramer's theorem, obviously named after Kramer, that says this is Kramer's theorem. There is a non-trivial solution for that equation if the determinant of that matrix right there is zero. What's non-trivial mean? The trivial solution is when all the values of x are zero. Physically, that's not very interesting. That's why the mathematicians call that a trivial solution. If you want a non-trivial solution, that has to be true. The determinant of that matrix has to equal zero. So let's, let's go back to it. What does that mean physically? Nothing. This is a mathematical statement that has been proven, probably by Kramer. And so this is true. It doesn't mean anything more than that until this equation there tells you something about the world around you. Well, there's a problem here in that 
that's a matrix, that's a matrix, that's a scalar. There's one too many variables for the number of equations you've got. This tool right here, and it's just a mathematical tool, helps you get around that and helps you extract solutions from this. Okay? So these are the mostly the two reasons or engineers and scientists care about the determinant. It has some properties that we really, really care about. These properties are simple mathematical statements that are true of this mathematical operation called a determinant. If you're going to look at this and insist on asking what does this mean, you're going to be disappointed. Inherently, it doesn't mean anything. It has mathematical properties that are useful as long as these matrices tell us something about the world around us. So if you can make that leap, you should be okay. Now, to calculate a determinant of a small matrix is kind of tedious, but it's not too hard. In almost all cases, uh, determinants are calculated on a computer. There are, there are fairly efficient algorithms that will do this for you. You'll very, very seldom calculate determinants manually other than just sort of learning how to do it in a class. Once you learn how to do it, you generally go over and have the computer do it after that. So, there's what you need to know about determinants. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.